It's fairly safe to say that I am no stranger to the perceived hopelessness of a gambling addiction. I have been in many parts of my life at what I perceive to be at or near rock bottom. I have had dark thoughts. I have been in places where I felt that things were hopeless, that they were helpless, that there was no way that my life could ever improve from the dire situation that this gambling addiction had put me in. The people I want to address today in this video, which as you can tell already is going to be probably quite a personal and emotional one, are those who are currently in that situation. The people who feel that there are you know, very few options left for them, their life is destined to continue down this path and that there is no redemption arc, there is no possibility of improvement, of ridding themselves of this addiction and that things will only ever get worse. And particularly those people who may see that there is no viable way out of this addiction. Now, if that is you, and if you are on a particularly bad point, and if you are contemplating in any way self-destruction or self-harm, then please may I refer you to someone who is far, far more qualified and far better to talk to than myself. All right, there will be links in the description below. If you are contemplating any form of self-harm, then may I strongly recommend giving the Samaritans a call. They are non-judgmental, they are fantastic people, and they are always, always there to talk to if you ever have those sorts of thoughts or feelings. On that note before I go into the main topic of today's video which is how to build a safety net for yourself when you are in this very very fragile um, situation and I'll elaborate on that a bit further as to what I mean. Um, I will share very quickly uh, a, a butchered quote because I, I always butcher quotes from someone far smarter than me in relation to the topic of suicide and this was shared um, via a very smart man, Jordan Peterson, who actually shared it from someone who was smarter than him. So uh, yes, it's, it's definitely trickled down the chain of smartness and now you've unfortunately got it coming out of my mouth in probably a far less articulate form. But the essence of it is that if, when it comes to suicide or self-destruction, there's always tomorrow. And the point that is trying to make, and it's something I spoke about quite a while ago, is that if you feel you are at the bottom, if you feel like the only way out of the situation you are in is that finality, okay, is that if you don't have to do it today, you know, you can always do it tomorrow. It's always an option. And that sounds incredibly dark and incredibly um, cynical, all right, and almost a dangerous thing to say. But the purpose of it is this you get to live today. And if it doesn't work out, you know, try tomorrow and try the next day. You know, the option for the end is always there. So why not give it a go? Why not give recovery a go? Why not give life a go in whatever form that may take? And you might find that just by making some changes, dramatic things can happen. Suicide, they always say, another very smart person once said, is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. And I do truly believe that. And it's quotes like that and it's ideas like that that have actually got me through the darkest points of my life where I felt maybe this world would be better off without me. And I thought, well, actually, if that's the case, then I might as well live today, um, you know, do something, go out and do something that I enjoy because, well, you know, I can always end it tomorrow. And whilst that's a seemingly frivolous way of looking at an incredibly dark topic, because it helped me, I wanted to share it with you. But like I say, there will be links to far smarter people, far people far more qualified to talk about these things if you are experiencing these issues. And there'll be links in the description below and um, phone numbers and people that you can talk to. But people that you can talk to are things that I want to talk about today. And whilst I fear this is going to be sort of probably a bit of a longer video, I want to, I think it's important to give a little bit of background as to what has brought me to talk about this particularly heavyweight subject today. I live in a relatively reasonable postcode area, okay? It's not affluent, it's not posh, it's also not, you know, a, a slum. It's a respectable area. And because it's a respectable area, it's filled with so-called respectable people, the not-in-my-backyard types. Now, not that long ago, a young lady um, who was clearly homeless has moved into the area and is currently living out of a series of tents just around the corner actually from you know probably about a couple hundred yards from my front door in a small woodland area and naturally the parish council and the not in my backyard types have been absolutely up in arms I'm trying to get this lady moved on saying it sort of degenerates the area and all the rest of it now oddly i found myself quite to the contrary 
I was, in a sense, intrigued by this young lady and uh, how what had led her to the situation she was in, and I did contemplate going to talk to her, but I wanted to try and do that in a sort of a you know, constructive, non-patronising way. And as yet, I haven't, because I haven't figured out a way to do that, and I want to make sure I'm doing it for the right reasons rather than literally being sort of nosy and or intrusive. But what I did come to realise is why I felt such a level of empathy or sympathy with this young lady. And it made me realise that I've been incredibly lucky in my life. Yes, my life had been full of these crushing lows, these very dark times, these you know emotional issues, mental health issues, depression, addiction, um, you know suicidal ideation. I'd had multiple financial, serious financial issues, you know. But because of things that were beyond my control, things that were purely fortuitous on my part, I had never ended up in the situation this young lady would in, but it is in. But it made me realise how fine a line, how fine a tightrope we often walk between a life of relative comfort, of perceived, as I've mentioned in a previous video, success and wealth, and catastrophe, homelessness, all of those issues that this lady is obviously experiencing. She may have done or made mistakes or had an addiction that was far less destructive or for far less time than I did. But through other circumstances that were beyond her control, she is paying a far, far heavier price than I ever did. Do I wish that I would experienced a heavier price for my addiction? No. No, it certainly afforded me with a whole lot of problems in my life. All right, But I do feel an element of guilt when I see people who may not have acted for so long and so severely in such a destructive way and have not got away with it. That they are experiencing far, far worse fallout because of something that you know may have been out of their control. It may not be a case of addiction, or it may not be many of the other reasons we think of about you know that lead to homelessness. It just can be a very short and very sudden sequence of unfortunate events that can lead someone to be in such a state of need. And I think the reason that I felt this empathy or the sympathy is because I could relate to that. I knew that if it wasn't for certain people and certain support systems in the, come into my life at the right time and stayed there, that I very, very easily could have been in her position. Or dare I say, as I spoke about at the beginning of this video, much worse. I was very fortunate. When I decided to get into a recovery, that I had very, very strong people around me who would happily support me and who cared for me unconditionally to such an extent that they would ensure that I came to no harm. I have a very, very close relationship to my parents who helped me no end in supporting me emotionally and, dare I say, and I'll be honest, financially in the early days of recovery. Financial support with which I may not have had a roof over my head. Emotional support without which I may have become a statistic. I also had a wife who stuck by me and a lot of people won't be afforded that privilege. Not everyone that you speak to, not everyone you open up to, not everyone you talk to about your addiction will understand. And that's perfectly acceptable. They shouldn't be expected to understand. They shouldn't be, shouldn't be expected to understand to the same extent that you, having lived and breathed the addiction, understand. If someone you've caused someone harm, if you've put them in a compromised financial situation, if you've lied to them, you've stolen from them, or any of that, and then you come and say, well, it's because of a gambling addiction, yes, we are starting to understand as a society now more about this addiction, but to a lot of people, it's merely a case of self-control, of taking personal responsibility for your actions. And I'm actually a big advocate for personal responsibility, even in the face of addiction. It's your personal responsibility to address the issues that you have. And some people won't understand that, and that's perfectly you know, that is their, their privilege, that they are entitled to not understand. And I can under, I can see why from the outside you may not understand. In the same way that, you know, if it turned out that this lady who's living rough near my house was a, you know, a drug user, my initial instinct may be that I don't understand. Well, why would you do that? Why would you be taking drugs? Because when you can see, and it's well documented, the fallout, you know, the fallout in terms of your finances, your health, your relationships, it's well catalogued. The problems that drug addiction can have in your life so why would you've got yourself into that situation and then i need to take a step back and so i was an addict too the substance was different you know the behaviors were different but it was addiction 
And without the people with the support network around me, I very, very easily could have ended up homeless or dead, quite frankly. So what I want to use the rest of this video to talk about is support networks. As I say, I will totally acknowledge my privilege here and say I was very lucky to have a wife that understood. I had a family that were incredibly supportive in so many ways and I had people around me that I could talk to. Not everyone is in such a blessed, privileged position. But the important thing to realise is there are people to talk to. And they could be people on the end of the phone, they could be people in regular meetings, they could be people that you know, people on the periphery of your group, they could be people down the pub, obviously that doesn't work for alcohol addiction necessarily, but there will be people with whom you can build a support network. And sometimes they may actually come from quite a surprising place. I've spoken before, but I will just go over some of the people I spoke to. I spoke to a lot of the people in my local pub because, as I've documented, my one of my go-to gambling outlets was fruit machines or the digital machines in pubs. So I spoke to the people in my local pub, the regulars, to tell them about my problem. Did they care about my problem? No. But I knew there was eyes there that were looking out for me. I spoke to the landlord explain it, of the same pub to tell them about my problem, about my addiction, and to, tell, and to promise me that he would ban me from the pub should he see me gambling. Whether or not he'd do that, I don't know. It probably would have been a business of terrible business decision to ban me from the pub but you know there you go i spoke to my boss um i spoke to my boss because i was experiencing a lot of uh, mental health issues at the time um, and i explained and he actually understood because he had a uh, background in gambling addiction in terms of, sort of his family and also um a, a small period of his life where he felt that it was getting out of his control so he understood and i can still speak to him to this day if i experienced urges or anything like that he supported me through it. He, you know, helped me financially initially just to get myself sort of relatively stable, um, which I had to pay back, of course, you know, through overtime or just different deductions from my wages. But he, he was there. But the emotional support I received from lots of people was, you know, in the medium to long term at least, far more valuable than any financial support, which in some instances can drift over to the side of enabling. So. If you do need immediate financial support, um, just this is just a slight aside, then just ensure that you're getting the support you need and only the support you need, and that you're not just building up, you know, another means by which to facilitate your addiction. The message here is to reach out in any capacity to anyone that you think will listen. I have never been a massive advocate for GA for me. Okay, but there is absolutely no denying the efficacy of GA. There is no denying that it has saved thousands and thousands of lives and repair, helped repair many, many millions more. I have spoken to counsellors and I have had mixed experiences with counsellors, but again, they can form a very strong part of your support network. It is another person that is there to look out for you, another person you can speak to confidentially, and also it's another set of eyes and ears that are there to pick you up should you fall. If you don't think counselling's for you, but nothing has worked thus far, then give it a go. If you don't think attending meetings are for you, then give it a go. If you don't want to speak to XYZ person, then make sure you speak to other people. But dare I say, often help, often real support, and often the most invaluable um, harness safety net you get on this road to recovery it comes in the most unlikely forms and quite often from the most unlikely people and as always and i've acknowledged my my personal privileged situation many times in this video but i will say it again none of this is coming from a period of high a place of a high horse quite to the contrary i am lucky and when i see that young lady living out of a tent i feel almost guilt because maybe i deserve that more than her maybe i deserve the catastrophic consequences of my addiction more than she deserved whatever whatever you know the consequences of whatever it was that led her to the situation she was in i will never ever take my safety net for granted i will never take those people who despite my failings despite all the damage i'd done as a gambling addict those people who stuck with me that supported me okay and that could be anyone that could be my wife my family my boss or some of the local bar flies it doesn't matter right these people were there and the building of that support network was invaluable. 
So even if you don't think you've got those people, maybe you don't have a close family, maybe you don't have a partner, maybe a lot of these people have been driven away because of your addiction or because of your behaviours because of your addiction. Okay, maybe in time you can get these people back and they will become part of your support network. But if you don't, there are other people there at the end of the phone in regular meetings, you know, face-to-face -face counselling or just other like-minded people you can speak to. Dare I say even in things like the comment section of these videos where I love to see so many people help support each other when people share their stories of their gambling, of their addiction and talk about the damage they have done to their own lives. People are there often with positive affirming comments to pick them up and tell them that there is a better path there is something you can do but always always be aware of that very very fine line that we walk between perceived comfort and dare I say as I try to promote myself as historically perceived wealth and success and catastrophic failure both financially and in terms of other more serious aspects of your life and that includes your life itself I'll leave it there. As promised, here's a bit of self, same shame as self promotion. Feel free to click off now. But there will be a link to my Patreon in the description below. It's the least important link there. There are links to Samaritans, to Gamstock, to Gamcare, to Break Even, to all other great charitable and supportive organisations, um, far, far smarter and far more attuned to talk, dealing with these topics than I am. Um, but if you think this is helpful and you want to support me, then that link is there. If not, just like and share or subscribe or whatever help this video to reach more people maybe people in a situation that need to see it all right but until next time stay safe stay sane take care of yourselves you know appreciate you all all the best